good evening and thank you for tuning in to Ashland Tonight News. Today is Wednesday, December 5th and it's TV2's final broadcast of the semester. Here's a look at today's top stories. Did you receive a text message today? AU is keeping up with the latest technology for students' safety. Hear more details when we come back. Don't worry, it's not too late to sign up for tomorrow's dodgeball tournament. Find out how to play when we come back. AU's annual dinner theater, The Madrigals, kept satisfied guests with a feast of entertainment. Stay tuned for more. AU is festive with the 17th annual lighting ceremony this weekend. I'm Brittany Lee. And I'm Rana Hami. And you're watching Ashton Tonight News for local coverage you care about. Stay tuned. It's all coming up next. <laughs> Today at noon, hopefully you had your cell phone on silent. At 12.30 this afternoon, Ashen University Safety Services tested its emergency contact service. The system sends a text message to users' cell phone, notifying them about any potential emergencies on campus. Users who sign up for the service can be notified with information from all Ashen University branches. The test message sent today was sent to all registered users at every campus branch. Safety Services Director Dave McLaughlin explains what took place today. We tested our emergency notification system using the E2 system that we have. Um, what we'll do every semester, at least once a semester, send out a test message. The whole idea of that is to make sure that our staff, the people that are sending out the messages, are proficient in doing it. Also to test the system to make sure that it's operational. And it also gives the students an opportunity to, to see what a message is going to be like. I think it's a good system. I, I think it's going to you know, enhance the security here, hopefully, if everybody signs up for it. And I encourage everybody to sign up for it. If you are interested in signing up for the service, log on to www.ashen.edu and click on the Spotlight section in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. The service is free to anyone who wishes to sign up. The 2007 Fall Pledge class of the Phi Kappa Psi Fraternity will host a dodgeball tournament tomorrow night at 6 p.m. in the Rec Center. Individuals still interested in competing can sign up for $10 a team of at least five players. All proceeds gathered from this event will be donated to the Boys and Girls Club. If you are still interested in playing, be sure to show up at 6 p.m. with your money and roster. If you have any questions, email Garrett Winnicky at g-w-i-n-w-i-e-n-c-k at ashland.edu. Tuesday, December the 2nd, wrapped up the last day of the Madrigal Feast, which started on November 28th in Redwood. The feast is a dinner theater accompanied with entertainment, suggesting the time of Queen Elizabeth the I of England in the 1600s. The entertainment is primary musical, during which AU trombone singers perform Christmas carols, ceremonial music, and Madrigal. During this night event, the cast wears costumes designed as authentic renovation of period attire. The feast also included a four-course meal ending with flaming bread pudding. AU's 17th Annual Festival of Lights is scheduled to take place this Sunday, September, er, December 10th. The ceremony will include readings and musical performances by the Ashland University Choir, Women's Chorus, and Ashland Area Choruses. The service will be located in the Jack and Deb Miller Chapel. Doors will open at 6 p.m., music will begin at 7 p.m., and the candlelight service will begin, begin at 7.30 p.m. Canned food will be collected during this event and will be distributed to needy families in Ashley County by the associated charities. This event is free and open to the public. On December 16th, AU will hold a winter commencement ceremony in Kate's Gymnasium. Students will have the honor this year to listen to Daniel Bogdan, a 1978 graduate of Ashland University. Bogdan is one of the eight U.S. generals dismissed by the White House earlier this year, and he is well known for serving as United States Attorney for the District of Nevada. Ashland University is proud of Bogdan's achievements and welcomes him back to AU. An acoustic cafe was held last night featuring singer and songwriter Meg Allison. The event was held at 9 p.m. in Redwood Hall. 
Meg Allison is a 23-year-old graduate of Miami of Ohio University. After receiving her degree in mass communication, Allison moved to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, where she kicked off her musical career. Her debut album was released in 2005 entitled Missing Peace. Allison says many of her songs are inspired by favorite artists such as Jason Mraz, Ryan Adams, and Patty Griffin. For more information or to sample her music, log on to www.megallison.com. Slippery roads resulted in a fatal car accident Monday on Interstate 71. We'll have the details next. Also, Mansfield has high hopes for its new mayor. It's coming up on Ashland Tonight News. Stay tuned. My name's Andy McDonald. I ride this useless wooden toy for a living. It's hard. I've been doing it for 13 years. I'm still lame. I do a trick called a 540. It took me a good six years to learn. There's a whole generation of skateboarders out there that are just as talented athletically as any basketball or football player. Take somebody that's not going to be afraid to fall down a lot, because you definitely will fall down. You're not a failure until you refuse to get back up. Drugs are only going to hinder what I'm trying to do. That right there is my idea of getting high. Hi, Mr. President. My parents believe that eating meals together will make our country strong. Is this something that you did when you were a kid? I, I, I did eat with my family so long as my mother wasn't cooking. It's not good making fun of your mother, even if you are president, but it is good to have dinner with your kids. We know the more often children have dinner with their families, the less likely they are to smoke, drink, and use drugs. So simply having dinner together can help your children forever, even if you're not a great cook. Kids, how do we take care of our teeth? Brush your teeth twice a day. Floss your teeth once a day. If you want healthy teeth, do this every day. Brush your teeth, fight tooth decay. Floss your teeth. Don't forget regular dental checkups, okay? Brush your teeth twice a day. Floss your teeth once. You're a good driver, a careful driver, and you don't stand a chance. Not at a railroad crossing with bad sight lines and no lights or gates, where vegetation, buildings, or hills block your view, where you can't see the train and you only have seconds before it hits your safe, careful self and you die. Go to angelsontrack.org to report dangerous crossings because careful is just no match for a 200-ton locomotive. Welcome back. A fatal car accident occurred Monday morning on Interstate 71 around 7 a.m. between Ohio 61 and Ohio 95. According to witnesses, 28-year-old Philip Letters of Mansfield lost control of his 1988 Honda Civic while crossing a bridge. Letters swerved into the medium and hit a 1999 Volvo driven by 32-year-old Richard Stull of O'Leary. Both men were pronounced dead at the scene. A third vehicle, an Isuzu Rodeo towing an U-Haul trailer, was hit by flying debris. However, the vehicle only suffered minor damages and none of its passengers were injured. injured. All southbound lanes were closed at Ohio 95 for three hours. Highway patrolmen, patrolmen state that the accident was a result of slippery roads and speed. After a brief chase in Mansfield, law enforcement officials captured two suspects in a string of robberies in Richland County last week. County last week. 32-year-old Troy Cook and 21-year-old Cameron Aikens are now in police custody. The duo has been called a modern-day Bonnie and Clyde. They are suspected in a number of break-ins and robberies in the Mansfield area. They face a number of charges including aggravated robbery, kidnapping, forgery and theft. The couple is suspected of tying up and robbing an elderly couple on Tuesday of last week. The couple is expected to be arraigned sometimes this week. A couple accused of stealing $7 million in cash and checks from an armored car company were arrested and placed into federal custody until their court hearings in West Virginia. Roger Lee Dillon, his girlfriend Nicole Boyd, and Dillon's mother Sharon Lee Gregory, all of Youngstown, were arrested by FBI agents around 7.30 a.m. on Saturday outside of Beckley, West Virginia. Robert Dillon is being charged with bank larceny and Boyd is being charged with aiding and abating. Both hearings are scheduled for today before Magistrate Judge R. Clark Vanderbilt in Beckley, West Virginia. FBI agents have reportedly recovered a large sum of the money that is believed to have been stolen from AT Systems International in Liberty, Ohio. 
This last Sunday afternoon, municipal court judge and seven other city officials swore in Don Caliber at the Renaissance Theater. The new Mansfield mayor described the event as the first United Public inaugural ceremony during which he emphasized the importance of unity and progress and stressed the need for economic development. Caliber is the first African American to hold the city's highest office. Mansfield sees this event as a hope that will bring the community together. After more than eight years serving the community as the Red Cross leader in Ashland County, Georgine Aber is retiring on December the 28th. Aber is leaving her position with a lot of memories to recall, in particular those related to the people she helped. On the other hand, those who worked with Aber say that she is a person difficult to replace. Aber assures that she will continue to volunteer throughout the community after her retirement, as she has done so for more than 20 years. Well, I bundled up for class today. Snow and boots and scarves are keeping students warm with this snowy weather. So stay tuned to, for your weather updates with Leland Gottlieb. Ashton Tonight News will be right back. And now, another fact of Congress. Like a tree, our national government has three branches. First, there is the President of the United States, called the Executive Branch. The President is like your school principal. He makes important policy decisions on things like the environment and health care. He's also the commander-in-chief of the military. A second branch is Congress, called the legislative branch. The main job of the legislative branch is to debate and pass laws. They also oversee the activities of the president. Finally, there is the court system, or the judicial branch. Sometimes people disagree about what laws mean, so we ask judges to help us decide. The Supreme Court is the ultimate judge of the land. These three branches of government work together to form a complete system. And that's another fact of Congress. Ashland Theological Seminary, transforming the world. One pastor. One counselor. One city. One campus. One village. One family. One teacher. One crisis. One missionary. One shelter. One church. Transforming the world one student at a time. As parents, we do whatever is necessary to ensure the health of our children. Sadly, most parents don't realize that their child's first eye exam with an eye doctor should be between the age of 6 and 12 months. I urge you to take your baby to an optometrist for a comprehensive eye assessment. It can literally change your child's vision of the future. Infancy optometrists offer a no-charge eye assessment for infants 12 months old or younger. Call today to find an optometrist near you. Welcome back to Ashland Tonight News. I am Leland Gottlieb with your weather. Let's get right to the maps right now and see what's going on around the region. As you can see, we have a low pressure system just to the east of us, and this worked through the area the past 24 hours and left behind some moderate snow accumulations. Around the Mansfield, Ashland, and Worcester area, we saw uh, accumulations anywhere from 3 to 4 inches. Now behind this low pressure system, we have a northerly winds with a high pressure system, which is leading to some lake effect snow showers. I don't see much in the way of accumulation. We may see another dusting a half an inch before the evening is over. Now, as we shift our attention to the temperatures, you can see exactly where this low pressure system is cut out. Above, or to the west of it, we have temperatures in the 20s. And even up in Fargo, we have temperatures below zero. Now, this won't make it that far south, but we will see temperatures in the teens this evening. Lastly, as we take a look at the current wind chills, we can see behind this low pressure system, we have winds anywhere from 20 to 30 miles per hour. And with these winds, we may see some pretty hefty wind chills and right now in Ashland, we have a wind chill of currently 12 degrees, which is pretty brutal. So for the rest of the evening, I would stick in and just study for your finals. Now, for the next three days, we'll see mostly sunny conditions tomorrow. But don't be fooled by that because the high will only be 29 degrees. And then we'll see temperatures moderate for the next two days up to 35. That's all I have for weather. Here's Brendan with sports. Thanks, Lee. I'm Brendan Bittner. Now let's get to all the action in AU sports. The men's basketball team came, came into Saturday's matchup against fourth-ranked Finley as underdogs, but they came out as victors in a monstrous upset of the Oilers, 84-81.
This is the same Finley team that defeated Ohio State in the preseason. AU coach Roger Lyons, who is known for relying on a man-to-man -man defense, confused Finley with his implementation of a 1-3-1 zone look. As a result, Finley shot just 43% from the field and 32% from three-point land. Center Cale Richardson, who is the GLIAC Player of the Week now, paced the Eagles with 28 points. He also hit on all 10 of his free throws. Ashland made its last 11 from the stripe in the game, but still needed Finley to miss two threes in the final seconds to secure the victory. Brett Wackerly added 18 points, including three clutch threes in the second half. Tyler Rosenberger chipped in 16 points and five boards, and Brett Bartlett tallied 14 points. Ashton is now 3-3 three three on the season and 1-0 in the GLIAC. They look to build on the victory tomorrow night at Hillsdale. The women's basketball team didn't need all that drama to win their game against Finley. They won on Saturday 71-58. Ashton shot 50% from the field. Center Jessica Minch led the offensive attack with 23 points on 9 for 14 shooting. She also added three blocks on the other end. Betsy Morrison threw in 11 points and snagged 12 boards for the double-double. Back on November 25th, Ashland did need the drama to pull out a win against Shepard at Cage Gymnasium. The Eagles blew a 13-point lead as Shepard tied the game at 88 with 5 seconds to play, but Alethea Lamberson took the inbounds pass, raced up the floor, and hit a 25-footer with .2 seconds left. She finished with 20 points, 7 dimes, 6 boards, and 4 steals. Ashland is 5-2 on the season and 1-0 in the GLIAC. They traveled with the men to take on Hillsdale tomorrow. Ashland's swimming and diving teams dove into the pool this weekend against Mercyhurst and Gannon. The women won their side of it with 752 points. Edinburgh finished with 497 and Gannon 409. Freshman Allison Morgan set the school record in, a, in the 100 butterfly with a time of 59.02 seconds. Morgan also won the 50 freestyle and 100 freestyle. She also was part of the 200 freestyle relay, 400 med medley relay, 200 medley relay, and 400 freestyle relay teams that finished first. Janice McCloskey took home the victory in the 200 butterfly, and Emily Hilgert won the 100 backstroke. The men's team also won the invite, finishing with 712 points. Gannon had 474 and Edinburgh 397. Freshman Eric Hackinson qualified for the national meet and set a school record in the 200 freestyle with a time of 1 minute and 40 seconds. He also won the 200 freestyle also on the weekend before Derek, also winning on this weekend were Derek Baylog, Sean McGraw, Brian Warhatch, Jonas Jeffsell, Andy May, Oscar Thomason, and Chewy Vogel. The Eagle men also won five relays including the 400 medley, 200 free, 200 medley, 800 medley, and 400 free. Both teams have a long break from competition as they don't compete again until January 11th at Gannon. The Ashland wrestling team finished second in its second tournament of the year. On Saturday, it finished with 115 points, six and a half behind winner Mercyhurst at the 10th annual Simonson Invitational in the Conard, Conard Fieldhouse. Two Eagles finished at the, the top of their weight class. Justin Ferguson won at 184 pounds and Josh O won at 197. Three Eagles finished as runners-up, Kyle Kanaga at 141, Marcus Gordon at 149, and Mohamed Abdurrahman at 157. Ashland hits the mat next week, next in Newberry, South Carolina, on December 15th for the Southern Duels. Several Eagle athletes qualified for a national meet in the indoor track and field non-scored meet at Finley. Michelle Starks and Tara Cooper qualified in a 20-pound weight throw. Cooper's throw of 17.75 meters is the new freshman record in the weight throw. Jen Tinney qualified for nationals in the shot put. Rob Clank qualified in the 35-pound weight throw. And Brian Vickers qualified in the shot put. Congratulations to all those AU athletes. That closes the book on a very successful week in Eagle sports. Stay tuned to Ashland Tonight News. Up next is Candace Kaczynski with your entertainment news. Our children want to know everything about the world around them. And yet sometimes what they discover makes them feel vulnerable and insecure. In times like these, they need the comfort of an adult, the honesty of parents, and playtime to help them deal with their feelings and fears. Time that will literally heal their hearts. The gift of imagination allows children to see a better world. 
Playtime allows them a chance to practice creating it. Don't underestimate the power of play. Welcome back to Ashland Tonight News. I'm Candace Kaczynski with all of your Hollywood happenings. Well, according to a report found in Star Magazine this week, high school musical sweethearts Vanessa Hutchins and Zac Efron are going through a bit of a rough spot in their relationship. It seems that Mr. Efron is a little too metro for an 18-year-old actress. An insider quoted in Star Magazine this week said that Vanessa told Zac to stop being such a sissy and freaking out when he gets blemishes. Apparently, Efron almost bailed on a birthday bash he was scheduled to attend recently, all because of a zit. Well, Zach, if, you, if I were you, I'd give the folks over at Proactive a call. They're always looking for new celebrity endorsements. In other Hollywood news, actor Dennis Quaid and his wife filed suit yesterday against Baxter Healthcare, the makers of the drug heparin. This after their newborn twins were given an overdose of the drug. The product liability suite suit claims that the company was negligent in packaging different doses of the product in similar vials. The couple is seeking more than $50,000 in damages. The twins were released from the hospital and are said to be at home and appear to be doing well. Well, it is the season of giving and celebrities Nicole Richie and Joel Madden were in full swing this week as they hosted a surprise baby shower for 100 expectant moms at the Los Angeles Free Clinic in Hollywood. The couple handed out over $200,000 worth of gifts to the moms-to-be. Richie was quoted as saying, there is a responsibility to help the community. Way to go, Nicole. Those 82 minutes you spent in jail really must have made an impact on your life. Well, that's it for this week's Entertainment Report. I'm Candace Kaczynski. Right now, it's time for your health report with Michael Hartz. Thanks, Candace. I'm Michael Hartz, and this is tonight's Ashland Tonight News Health Report. A study found, today, found in today's Journal of the American Medical Association finds that antibiotics have little to no effect on sinus infections. The study conducted by British researchers found that people suffering from facial pain and a runny nose with, it gets a little gross here, greenish or yellowish mucus generally improved in about two weeks regardless of whether or not they took an antibiotic. The most commonly prescribed antibiotic for sinus infections is amoxicillin, which is very similar to the antibiotic penicillin. There are about 31 million sinus infections diagnosed each year by doctors in the United States, making sinus infections one of the most common reasons for a doctor's office visit. While well, cheer up, Ohio, according to a report in Mental Health America released this week, Ohio is among the saddest states in the country. Researchers recently ranked 50 states by looking at depression and suicide statistics. Utah was named the saddest state with 10% of adults and adolescents reporting that they had experienced a severe depression in the past year. Researchers also found that states with higher suicide rates had fewer mental health care resources, and those happy states like South Dakota had more psychologists and psychiatrists on hand. Mental Health America hopes to highlight the need for an increase in mental health care resources in the United States. Well, with the holiday season rapidly approaching, TV2 has some tips to make sure your gifts for the young ones this year are safe. When you are shopping for children's gifts, make sure to be a label reader. Always look for the safety recommendations found on the package. Avoid toys that may have sharp edges or small parts as they may cause unforeseen injuries. If purchasing riding type toys such as a skateboard or rollerblades, be sure to purchase safety gear like helmets, knee pads, and elbow pads. Also be sure to immediately discard of plastic, packaging and other packaging once the toy is opened. Following these helpful hints 
will ensure a safe, happy holiday season for the young ones on your list this year. Well, that'll do it for Ashland Tonight News Health Report. I'm Michael Hartz. We'll be right back after this. My father taught me a lot about life without ever saying a word. When I was a little girl, my friends were all just like me. His never were. Hello, hello. Uh, didn't you bring them, George? I thought you were going No, no, I brought them last time. Huh? You're all right. <laughs> I forgot. All right, so all right. we'll be with you. I used to wonder, why would a Jew, a Christian, and a Muslim ever get together? It was him. And then I finally got it. They had a lot more in common than donuts. Friendship. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. With diabetes, you feel more vulnerable. Every day is a new challenge. Diabetes has made me improve my life. I take better care now. I could actually die from the flu. Being in control is the only way to survive. A flu shot? Guess you could say it's like a life preserver when you have diabetes. I'm going to ask my doctor for a flu shot today. One in eight Americans goes hungry. One idea helped change that. A community started a garden that blossomed into farmer's markets. One in six children lives in poverty. One group of women found an answer by opening a daycare center that their neighbors could afford. Today, 36 million Americans live in poverty. But one by one, people are helping themselves and each other to change the picture of poverty to one of hope. For easy ways you can help, visit PovertyUSA.org. Welcome back to Ashland Tonight News. Don't forget, this Friday is the last day to turn in winter housing applications. Turn in applications to Res Life located in the Student Center by 5 p.m. Bingo, grocery bingo that is. Tomorrow night, gather with friends and test your luck to win some snacks. It's, it all starts at 9 p.m. in Redwood. The annual late night volleyball kicks off this Friday at 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. Food and drinks will be provided, so be sure to sign up. Entries are due today to rec services. Access and International Club is organizing a Christmas party on December 7th at the Trinity Lutheran Church at 7 p.m. We're going to have activities and entertainment, so come and join us. And yup, we do have free food and drinks served. RHA knows how hectic finals can be, and breakfast always sounds good. Come enjoy late night breakfast and convo on Monday at 9 p.m. So how are the finals going on? <laughs> uh, well, I'm They're running, finals, uh, yeah. I'm yeah. running on three hours of sleep and lots of coffee. Basically. Oh, <laughs> I feel you. I have a history exam on Monday that I'm really nervous about. <laughs> We're almost there, though. Almost. We're almost done. Well, that about does it for tonight's Ashland Tonight News. We would just like to thank our TV2, TV2 crew. And if you are interested in helping out with Ashland's TV station, you can email TV2 at ashland.edu. Also remember to send in your questions to TV2 to ask AU President Thinks what he thinks. That's right, and don't forget to join us next year on Wednesdays at 5 o'clock. Thanks for joining us. Have a happy and safe holiday. Have a great night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. I have